Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will talk about pleural effusion, its types, causes, how to evaluate effusion and lastly, the management. We have a lot to cover, so let's begin. Pleural effusion is the accumulation of serous fluid within the pleural space. There are other terms for other types of collections in pleural space. The accumulation of frank pus is termed empyema, that of blood is hemothorax, and that of chyle is a chylothorax. Next, types of pleural fluids. Pleural fluid is either transudate or exudate. The difference in both is the higher protein content in the latter, and we will talk about it in detail when discussing investigations. Transudative fluid results from either increased hydrostatic pressure, as seen in cardiac failure, or from decreased oncotic pressure as seen in the liver or renal failure, nephrotic syndrome or malnutrition. Exudative pleural effusion results from inflammation, and resultant increased microvascular permeability, due to disease of pleura or injury in the adjacent lung. Causes of pleural effusion Pleural effusion causes can be classified according to the type of effusion, into exudative causes and transudative causes of effusion, as has been just described. But, a more practical grouping of causes is, into common and uncommon causes. Common causes of effusion include, pneumonia resulting in perineumonic effusion, tuberculosis, pulmonary infarction, malignancy, cardiac failure, subdiaphragmatic disorders like a subphrenic abscess, and pancreatitis etc. Uncommon causes of pleural effusion include hypoproteinemia from nephrotic syndrome, liver failure or malnutrition, connective tissue diseases particularly systemic lupus erythematosus and rheumatoid arthritis, postmyocardial infarction syndrome, acute rheumatic fever, MEG syndrome, which is ovarian tumor plus pleural effusion, myxedema, uremia, and asbestos-related benign pleural effusion. Coming on to the clinical assessment of effusions. The causes of the majority of pleural effusions are identified by a thorough history, examination and relevant investigations. Symptoms. Pleuritic chest pain, that is pain on inspiration and coughing often precede the development of an effusion, especially in patients with underlying pneumonia, pulmonary infarction or connective tissue disease. The patient may also complain of breathlessness, depending on the size and rate of accumulation. Signs of pleurisy like a pleural rub may be found in patients presenting early with pleuritic chest pain, in whom effusion is either mild or has not yet developed. When the effusion is present, on inspection, tachypnea and reduced chest movement on the affected side may be found. Palpation will confirm reduced expansion on the affected side. The trachea and mediastinum may be moved to the opposite side of the effusion, if it is large. Percussion will yield a stony dull note over effusion. Upon auscultation, breath sounds and vocal resonance will be absent over effusion. You may be able to hear bronchial breathing or crackles above the effusion surface. How to investigate pleural effusions? First the radiological investigations. Erect chest x-ray, posteroanterior view will confirm the pleural effusion. The classical appearance of pleural fluid on the erect PA chest film is of a curved shadow at the lung base, blunting the costophrenic angle, and the meniscus ascending towards the axilla. Around 200 milliliters of fluid is required in order for it to be detectable on a PA chest x-ray. Previous scarring or adhesions in the pleural space can cause localized effusions. Subpulmonary effusion, which is pleural fluid localized below the lower lobe, simulates an elevated hemidiaphragm. Pleural fluid localized within an oblique fissure may produce a rounded opacity that may be mistaken for a tumor. This is called pulmonary pseudotumor or vanishing tumor. Ultrasound is more accurate than plain chest x-rays for determining the presence of fluid, and it is especially useful in the patient who is bedridden and unable to stand for a chest x-ray. 
clear hypoechoic space on ultrasound is consistent with a transudate, and the presence of moving, floating density suggests an exudate. The presence of septation most likely indicates an evolving empyema, or resolving hemothorax. CT scanning is indicated where the malignant disease is suspected. Both CT scan and ultrasound are also useful in guiding pleural tap and pleural biopsy. Next coming to, pleural aspiration. In situations where transudative effusion is a possibility, for example in cardiac failure, sampling fluid for testing is not needed, unless atypical features are present. Appropriate treatment should be administered in these cases, and the effusion then re-evaluated. In other circumstances, however, diagnostic sampling is required. Simple aspiration provides information on the color and texture of fluid, and this alone may immediately suggest an empyema or chylothorax. The presence of blood is consistent with pulmonary infarction or malignancy, but may also result from a traumatic tap. Fluid then should be sent for pH, protein, lactate dehydrogenase, cytology and microbiology. Protein analysis of fluid allows classification into transudate and exudate. Exudative effusion is the effusion with protein content greater than 30 grams per liter, while transudative effusion has protein less than 30 grams per liter. Light's criteria is used for distinguishing transudative from exudative effusions in the borderline cases, and shall be applied in fluid with protein between 25 and 35 grams per liter. According to this criteria, exudate is likely if one or more of the following criteria are met. Pleural fluid protein to serum protein ratio greater than 0.5. Pleural fluid LDH to serum LDH ratio greater than 0.6, and pleural fluid LDH greater than two-thirds of the upper limit of normal serum LDH. A low pH suggests infection, but may also be seen in rheumatoid arthritis, ruptured esophagus or advanced malignancy. The predominant cell type provides useful information, and cytological examination is essential. Gram stain of fluid may suggest perineumonic effusion. Other tests like glucose and amylase can be done on pleural fluid and are helpful in certain diseases. Low fluid glucose is seen in rheumatoid arthritis, tuberculosis. Raised amylase is seen in effusion due to pancreatitis or esophageal perforation. Pleural biopsy. Ultrasound or CT-guided pleural biopsy provides tissue for pathological and microbiological analysis. Where necessary, video-assisted thoracoscopy allows visualization of the pleura and direct guidance of a biopsy. Management. Therapeutic aspiration may be required to palliate breathlessness in larger effusions, but removing more than 1.5 liters at a time is associated with a small risk of re-expansion pulmonary edema. An effusion should never be drained to dryness before establishing a diagnosis, as biopsy may become impossible until further fluid accumulates. A chest tube insertion is indicated. If the fluid is purulent, turbid or cloudy, or if the fluid is clear, but the pH is less than 7.2 in patients with suspected infection. Treatment of the underlying cause, for example heart failure, pneumonia, pulmonary embolism or subphrenic abscess, will often be followed by resolution of the effusion. In case of recurrent pleural effusions, options for management include recurrent aspiration, pleurodesis, indwelling pleural catheter, or drug management to alleviate symptoms for example opioids to relieve dyspnea. Thanks for watching. If you have learned something useful, why not share it with your colleagues as well? Consider subscribing to this channel.